Kevin, it's great to see you again. Let's hear some of your Beautiful. favorite stocks. Sure. I mean, it's clear, Kelly, that we're in a rising rate environment. Whether we get two rate hikes next year, three, four, or even more, as Jamie Dimon recently suggested, rates will be rising and the economy will continue to expand. Historically, financials perform well in rising rate environments when the economy continues to expand. However, what we particularly like, Kelly, isn't necessarily just the large money center banks, but rather the smaller cap regional banks community banks, and mortgage and thrift institutions. In fact, we have three names that you see on the screen there that are within the new series of our Premier Banking Opportunities Trust, those being Horizon Bancorp, Washington Trust Bancorp, and, of course, Sandy Springs Bancorp. I'd like to focus on the first one just to give you a feel for the investment opportunity that we see. Horizon has a market cap of about $1 billion, a yield of about 2.8%, They've been growing their dividend over the last five years at a clip of 15%, and they have a PE of just 10.7. Income potential, growth potential in a rising rate environment, and low multiple. We think that's a pretty attractive combination. Yep. You've met, so that's the detail on Horizon, Washington Trust, Sandy Spring, a couple other names you mentioned. So what would you do? We get results, obviously, in the morning from some of the biggest banks. What would you do with them? Why do you think they might not be quite and might not have quite as much upside? I think the larger money center banks have upside as well, but the additional upside potential that we see with these smaller cap regional banks are from the M&A perspective. We start to see M&A activity pick up towards the latter part of 2021. We think that trend around consolidation in the regional bank space continues. And also, we know that banking is basically becoming a technology game. Those banks that can adapt to the changing customer preferences for the way that they bank and this fintech type of movement are the ones that are going to best be able to adapt and survive. We think that comes from the regional banks more so than it does the big money center banks. Just a final question on this. You know, how much was pulled forward into 2021 or to what do you attribute such strong performance last year? You know, what do banks have to do in order to be able to keep that type of rally going? Yeah, I think what we've seen, and it almost mirrors the activity that we've seen in the bond market, right? So far this year, the 10-year has moved up around 24 basis points. That's on top of a move of about 59 basis points last year. Total move of, let's call it, 83 basis points, Kelly. That suggests that the bond market is already pricing in between three and four rate hikes this year. As a result, those financials have been positioned to withstand and weather those interest rate hikes. So as we hear earnings reports, which we're forecasting yet another record 20 percent plus earnings growth rate for the S&P 500 during the fourth quarter of 2021, we think financials will shine once again. But again, as we look forward in 2022, we think it's the regional banks that offer more upside potential than the big money center banks. Very interesting. With that in mind, we'll certainly keep our ears pricked for M&A activity. Kevin, thanks for your time today. It's good to have you.